Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. We will now start with another group in plant kingdom and that is gymnosperms. Gymnosperms are the non-flowering seed producing plants. Non-flowering and seed producing. That means they do not produce flowers but seeds are produced. Now when we talk about a normal angiospermic plant we know that the ovary changes into the fruit and the ovule changes into the seed. Now, if these plants are non-flowering, that means there is no floral parts, no ovaries, so fruit formation will not take place. And the seeds which are produced, they are not going to be enclosed inside that fruit-like structure. So, these seeds which are produced, they are naked seeds. So, seeds are naked, not enclosed within a fruit. Our gymnosperms, they are divided into four subgroups. The first is known as the conifers, in which we take the example of pinus or pine. The second group is cycadales, in which we take the example of cycus. The third group is of gentiles, and the fourth group is of ginkgoales. The fourth group includes ginkgo oils. Now in this particular group that is in ginkgo oils, we include a plant which is called ginkgo biloba. The spelling is G-I-N-K-G-O biloba. And it is considered as living fossil. This is a very important thing. This is considered as living fossil. That means we still have these plants but they show certain ancestral or old characters and that is why this plant is considered as living fossil. Now we will be talking about these two groups in details. Let us first start with this one that is pinus. Pinus which we commonly call the conifers and the reason of calling pinus or these kind of plants as conifers is the shape of the plant body. The main axis is elongated and the branches are arranged in an acropital manner. Now what do we mean by acropital manner? Acropital branching. Acropital branching. In this kind of branching we find that the lower branches are longer and older and the upper branches are shorter and younger and now when these get covered with leaves it gives a typical cone like shape to the plant and that's why they are called conifers. Pinus is monoecious. that means male and female reproductive structures are on the same plant that is monoecious. Now here we will be talking about the branches, leaves because it is a spore producing plant. It is going to produce spores and these spores that is microspores and megaspores they are produced on the leaves. So those leaves will be called the sporophylls. But before that let us talk about the stem. These are uh, more evolved plants as compared to what we have seen earlier that is bryophytes and pteridophytes. They have well developed structures like root stem and leaf, vascular tissue and everything is properly developed. Now when we come to the structure stem, we talk about two types of branches. Number one, the branch is known as the long shoot or the long branch. And the second one is known as dwarf shoot or the short branch. The long branch 
has a bud at its tip. So we can say there is a terminal bud. And because of this terminal or terminal bud, it continuously grows. That means this long shoot is of unlimited growth. Because of this terminal or apical bud. In case of dwarf shoot, there is no such bud, no bud at the tip. And because there is no bud at the tip, they have limited growth. So they have limited growth. Now, when we draw the plant, we will show both the types of branches. This is the vertical, the main trunk, which is long shoot. And at the tip, there is this terminal bud. And because of which, this shoot is going to continuously grow. That is the long shoot. Or in other words, we can say that the main trunk of the tree that we see in case of pinus is actually the long shoot. Now, arising from the long shoot are the branches. Now, from where are these branches going to arise? This long shoot is covered with scaly leaves. We'll talk about the leaves also. And from the axillary position of these leaves would arise the shorter shoots or the dwarf shoot. So, if this is the dwarf shoot, there is no bud at the tip, so it is going to have limited growth. And as we have written earlier that these arrangements are acropital. That means the lower branches are older and longer and the upper branches are shorter and younger. And these branches, they arise from the axillary part of the scaly buds. Oh sorry, scaly leaves. So here also there would be a scaly leaf. A scaly leaf and in the axil this particular shoot grows. So there are two types of branches that we see long shoot and the dwarf shoot. Now coming to the next structure that is the leaf. Now the leaves normally when we talk of leaves we talk of only two types but here we will write the third one which we will discuss in a slightly different manner. First leaf that is the scaly leaf. Now where do we find this scaly leaf here? The scaly leaf covers the main shoot. So it covers the long shoot. This is one. The second one that is there are long needle like leaves which are known as the foliar leaves. These leaves are green and needle like. They are needle like leaves. They are the ones which are going to perform photosynthesis and they arise at the tip of the short branch or the dwarf shoot. So now there are these leaves. These are needle like leaves and here we have shown only a limited number of branches. That's why it is appearing as if there is a there are less leaves but if there are many many branches it's going to appear as a compact structure. So here also we are going to draw these needle leaves and they are green in color. They perform photosynthesis because they have the green pigment. So this is how the arrangement is. So these are the two leaves. Foliage leaves or foliar leaves perform photosynthesis and the scaly leaves which are going to cover the body of the main trunk. That function is uh, the protection. Now the third type of leaves which are actually going to produce the spores or they have the spore producing structures. So those leaves are known as sporophylls. Now if these sporophylls they produce the microspores then we will call it microsporophyll and the other one will be called the macro or megasporophyll. Mega sporophyll. Only thing is these leaves that is microsporophylls and megasporophylls they are not found like this. They are arranged around the central axis in a very compact manner spirally to make a very compact structure which is called the cone or strobilus. 
So these leaves, that is the sporophylls, they form the cone or strobilus. So there can be a male cone and a female cone. Microsporophylls would be forming a compact structure, which would be the male cone, and the megasporophylls, they will form the female cone. Now, where is the location of these cones? The male cones, they arise in clusters and they are at the tip. So here we would find many male cones. So these are going to be the male cones. They are always in cluster and they are smaller in size. The female cones, they arise singly in the axis of the scaly uh, leaves. So if here is a scaly leaf, here is a scaly leaf, we would find that there would be a larger female cone. Normally because of the size, we may find them little hanging structures like this. So this is the female cone. Now when you take up this structure, uh, detailed structure of male and female cones in the next part, but now what we have understood is that the stem is uh, of two types of shoots or branches. One is long shoot and it is the one which has unlimited growth due to presence of the terminal bud. The dwarf shoot remains of limited growth as there is no bud at the tip. So these two are the shoots. Now the leaves, when we talk of, we normally talk of two leaves. The brown dry leaves, which are called the scaly leaves, their main function is protection. And the foliar leaves or the needle leaves, which are green colored, and they perform photosynthesis. These foliar or these green needle-like leaves, they have sunken stomata. Now, sunken stomata is an adaptation to minimize water loss. This is to minimize water loss. Normally, we see these kind of stomata in conditions where water becomes a scarce uh, or scarce, scarce condition. It could be in zero fights, that is the ones which are growing in dry areas. In case of pinus, it grows in extremely cold conditions. So the water is available in the form of a frozen, that is either ice or snow. So liquid water is not available in plenty. And that is why to minimize that water loss, they have sunken stomata so that transpiration can be minimized. The third type of leaves, which are the sporophylls, they are not arranged in a free manner like everywhere on the plant. They are arranged compactly around the central axis to form a cone or a strobilus. Position we have seen, male cones which are smaller in size but they grow in cluster around the terminal bud. Female cones are larger in size and they always grow singly in the axis of scaly leaves. So a brief introduction of how this pinus looks. The root system is very well developed. In case of pinus, we also find mycorrhizae. So here if we add this small thing, that is in case of roots, there is mycorrhizae. Mycorrhizae is the symbiotic association with the pinus root and fungus, which is again a characteristic feature in case of pinus. In pinus, we would find mycorrhiza. In case of cycas, we would find coralloid root. So that we will take up when we come to cycas. Now in the next part, we will talk about the detailed structure of the male and the female.